Today we have come to see the grave of Frederick Fleet. Um, he was the Titanic lookout. Before we get started, I'd just like to thank everybody that sub subscribed to my channel. It's a really big help. Uh, it makes it a little bit worthwhile. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you enjoy the, the, the video. Uh, and more importantly, please try and watch it all the way through. That is, that is a really big help. With that said, let's get on with it. Frederick Fleet was born in Liverpool, England on 15th of October 1887. He was the illegitimate child of Alice Fleet who was born 1870. It seems Alice abandoned Frederick. Alice moved to Massachusetts, USA in 1890 and got married in 1892. And in that marriage had a daughter, Frederick's half-sister, Elizabeth, who he never even knew. Frederick was raised by a succession of foster families and orphanages one of which was Dr. Bernardo's homes. Frederick first appeared on the 1891 census living at 272 Parliament Street, Toxteth Park, Liverpool, the home of Mrs. Alice Shaw. At just 12 years old, he was sent to a training ship and appeared on the 1901 census with many other boys under the care of Captain Frederick Longdon at Anglesey, Wales, where Fleet was described as learning a sea life. 1903, age 16, he went to sea as a deck boy, working his way up to an able seaman. In 1908, age 21, he worked aboard the Oceanic, where he stayed for four years. Then, in 1912, April 10th, Frederick boarded the Titanic as a lookout. April 14th, 1912, at 10pm, Frederick started his watch at his post in the Crow's Nest with Reginald Lee, taken over from Archie Jewell and George Simmons, who advised them to keep a sharp lookout for small icebergs. At 11.40pm, Frederick Fleet spotted an iceberg dead ahead. He struck the bell three times and turned telephone to alert the bridge which was being watched by first officer William Murdoch at the time. Frederick shouted, Iceberg, right ahead. Frederick received a ply, thank you. Murdoch ordered the ship to steer to port to avoid the iceberg and the engines reversed but it was too late. The starboard side of the Titanic scraped along the iceberg. Ice fell onto the deck of the Titanic. Frederick and Reginald remained at their post in the crow's nest until relieved 20 minutes later. Frederick then made his way down to the boat deck reporting to second officer Charles Lightoller who ordered him to help quartermaster Robert Hitchin to load and launch lifeboat 6 with 28 women and children and it was the first boat to be launched on the port side. Second officer Charles Lightoller ordered quartermaster Robin Hitchin to board lifeboat 6 to take charge of the tiller and fleet also to board to man one of the lifeboat's oars. Also Arthur Godfrey Puchin, a passenger, volunteered to help man the other oar. Once the lifeboat was on the water they tried to reach some lights of a ship in the distance. Hitchin at the tiller steering the lifeboat, fleet and Puchin at the oars. But then an argument arose with the passengers and Hitchin whether to return for survivors, Hitchin warning against going back as the people in the water may swamp the boat and sink it. Lifeboat 6 finally reached RMS Carpathania by 6am on Monday the 15th of April. The Carpathania returned to the sinking of the Titanic to pick up survivors and bodies. Once on American shores, Fleet was detained for questioning at both the American and British inquiries into the sinking of the Titanic. From June 1912, Frederick briefly served as a seaman on the Titanic sister ship Olympic before leaving White Star Liners altogether in August of that year. For the next 24 years Fleet sailed with Union Castle and various other companies. He served on a merchant ship during World War I finishing at sea altogether in 1936. He served once again in World War II on a merchant ship. On returning from the war he worked at Harlan and Wolfe as a shipbuilder and later was a shore master at arms for Union Castle Mal. Fleet had got married in 1917 to Eva Ernestine. They had a daughter they named Dorothy Ernestine on November the 24th, 1918. In the last year of Frederick's life, he worked as a part-time street vendor selling newspapers for the Echo in a pitch he had on Pound Tree Road in Southampton. He and his wife Eva lived with her brother Joseph. Frederick stayed in contact with the Titanic Historical Society and wrote to them often, but on December the 28th, 1964, his wife Eva sadly passed away. Her brother, who they lived with, 
with, evicted Frederick from the house. Frederick went into a state of depression. One night, he returned to the house of his brother-in-law on January the 10th, 1965, aged 77, and hung himself in the garden of number 9 Norman Road, Southampton, now known as the Lookout. Frederick Fleet was buried in a pauper's grave. His grave remained unmarked for nearly 30 years until 1993, when a headstone with an engraving of the Titanic was erected by donations raised by the Titanic Historical Society. So there's a little bit about um, Frederick. Very sad life he led. Um, but although I'm sure he was happy at some point during his life, of course he was. Uh, it's just a sad ending really, isn't it? Um, his grave is just up here, around here. There's a few new ones going in down here by the looks of it. Here we go. Coming up behind it. There it is. Old Frederick. It says Frederick Fleet, 1887-1965. Look out, RMS Titanic. Erected in his memory by the Titanic Historical Society. Um, someone's even put a little boat that has fallen over of the Titanic. Made a little Lego toy there. As I said before, this, I mean, this grave was unmarked until 1993, um, until this headstone was put there. It's, it's quite a while without a headstone. Um, and to have a pauper's grave, after all he went through, to have a, have a pauper's grave, very sad. Uh, anyway, Frederick, and may you rest in peace. You know, it's such a shame back then where you never had the help that you had today if you were feeling depressed. Today there's people you can call. So instead of ending up like Frederick, if you do have problems and have them struggling, how about you uh, pick the phone up and give someone a call? It's such a shame, such a shame that he had to feel the way that he did. But um, that was Frederick Fleet. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And all that's left to be said is, um, I bid you farewell.